but somebody else fighting for their spot at WrestleMania, several somebodies are the participants in this weekend's elimination chamber. Don't forget that's going to air while you're asleep this Friday night slash Saturday morning. Uh, it is going to be live from Perth, Australia and inside the elimination chamber structure itself. We've got Kevin Owens, LA Knight, Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley and Logan Paul. Yes. The U S champion is inside the elimination chamber and they're going to be vying for a shot at Seth Rollins world heavyweight championship. So now we know it's going to be one of these fellows in there with Seth. As you take a look at that graphic, Eric, we know for sure that Logan Paul wrestled Seth Rollins last year. There were no titles on the line. Seth was not the world heavyweight champion and Logan was not the U S champion. So maybe we're going to get title versus title if it's Logan, but if it's not Logan, is it LA Knights time? Is it drew McIntyre's time? Is it someone else? Just, yeah, and if you could leave that graphic up, Mr. Silva, I appreciate it. As I look at this, you know, it, again, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about options, right? There's so many great options. You've got such a deep talent roster at the top, so many different ways to go. But I think, I don't know, man, Drew just feels like he's been getting, I don't want to call it a push, but you know, a little nudge here and there every week in the right direction just seems to be more and more prominent in the conversation. LA Knight was already there. You know, do you continue to elevate him? Do you continue to turn up the volume on LA Knight? It would make sense business-wise. You'd have all the reasons to, I don't want to say justify it, but you'd have all the reasons to, to support that idea if you were pitching that in a meeting because the momentum is there. The audience is there. Uh, Kevin Owens, though, you can all, Kevin is always a go-to. Kevin will deliver every single time. And it seems like we haven't heard a lot from Kevin lately. Granted, I haven't been watching the show religiously. And, and I drop in when I hear about what's going on or I follow up and watch the show after it's aired to kind of get caught up on detail. So I may not be aware of, of conversation regarding Kevin. And he may be getting a little more attention than I'm seeing in my passive viewership. He's been in a feud but, with Logan Paul. All right. Then it doesn't seem to me like that would make sense. I don't know. I would have to say for me, it would be LA Knight or Drew be my, my pick. Yeah, I agree with that. I hope for one that uh, this is LA Knight's time and we see the whole crowd going bananas uh, for him. But it does feel like lately we've been positioning Seth as a bit more of a baby face. So Drew's probably the guy who gets the nod. And What's for, been going on with Bobby Lashley? Treading water Anything? a little bit. Treading water? I think he and AJ Styles are big names to have on the roster that are just sort of there right now. I don't think they're a focus. I could be mistaken on that, but that's my read anyway. Yeah, I would I would go with LA Knight then. I think just just the momentum seems to be on, on his side. Well, I guess what I was talking about, I mean, we do know that Logan Paul and, and, uh, and Kevin Owens hooked it up at the Royal rumble. So I don't think that's necessarily there for a rematch. I mean, I guess stranger things have happened. I could see Logan Paul for the interest of having, you know, an influencer, but that probably makes sense for him to be set up for somebody else as a result of them, quote unquote, costing him this match or something like that. But since Seth has been positioned a little bit more like a baby face lately and sticking up for Cody and, and all that sort of thing, maybe you need someone who's going to play the heel for him. And I, and I'm okay. If that's Drew McIntyre, I mean, when he won the world title years ago at WrestleMania, it was sadly the COVID WrestleMania. So not that there's going to be a big celebration for a heel winning, but I could see it. Uh, I, I'm anxious to see what they do with the women too. We know Rhea Ripley is going to be taking on Nia Jax down in Perth. There's going to be a women's elimination chamber. The winner will take on Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. The other big piece of business that everybody's going to be talking about this weekend at elimination chamber are not just the actual chamber matches themselves, but it was announced since we recorded most recently, Eric, 
that Seth Rollins is going to be joined by Cody Rhodes on the Grayson Waller effect. This is a modern day Piper's pit talking segment. So, uh, Seth and Cody are taking a 25 hour flight to do an interview. Wait a minute. I smell what you're cooking. I mean, this is where the rock's going to be here. And we're going to announce the, the tag match for night one, right? Seems that way, doesn't it? I mean, it feels like it's right there, that that's where we make the match official. And there's been lots of speculation, certainly even in the observer that night one will be a tag match rock and Roman against Cody and Seth. But now all the conspiracy theories are out because we saw the rocks promo at Friday night Smackdown where perhaps people are saying, Hey, wait a minute. When he talked about. Losing, he pointed to Roman and he never specifically said anyone's name when he was talking about anyone losing. And when he held up the one at the end of the night, posed with the bloodline, he was holding up an L, not a number one like everybody else. So people are saying, oh man, maybe, maybe the rock is a, is a double agent doesn't want to be part of the bloodline and it's actually supporting Cody. And this is part of the big plan. He's not just going to take the world title. He's going to take everything. So listen, the, uh, the snot thickens. That's what makes wrestling fun, right? When you can't call it exactly. And there's so many little <clears throat> nuances or, or nuggets, if you will, that are being embedded in this story that create the speculation, mm -hmm. what if you conspiracy theory, whatever you want to call it, you know, the speculation yeah. because, the, because there's so many different ways this could go and the intrigue the way this whole thing was laid out and, and it's developing. It's, it, it's creating so much conversation that I think, I don't know, is it fair to say that this may be the most buzz that WWE's ever had going into a WrestleMania? It feels like it because, well, social media helps that, right? There wasn't, social media back in Re WrestleMania three or WrestleMania one or WrestleMania five, whatever. But now we've got such interesting <clears throat> creative, excuse me. You've got rock coming in. You know, people have been speculating about rock getting involved in a WrestleMania for how many years now? Right. There's probably been four or five where rock's been a conversation, both internally and externally amongst the fans internally amongst WWE corporate about rocks involvement in WrestleMania, but scheduling and conflicts and, you know, being a movie star has always been a conflict. Now he's here and there's so many different ways this could go. And you layer that on top of the fact that, you know, as excited as I am about everything, it started off as kind of a bobble, you know, behind the line of scrimmage, that ball was bouncing around a little bit in the backfield before they really advanced it with the story that we have now. And even with that, Bobble or that fumble, if you will, creatively, they've recovered nicely and are moving downfield towards WrestleMania. So it's going to be interesting to see where this thing goes, given the subtle nuances in the story, as you just laid out. I mean, it's it, trying to think about what do they do after WrestleMania? That's really where my head tends to stay in these situations. You know, you see what's going on and you try to anticipate what's going to happen at WrestleMania. But I spend a lot of my time thinking, what? Yeah, but what after? What's Rock going to be doing after WrestleMania? What's his commitment? We know he's committed to WrestleMania. We know he's on a board of directors. But what's his ongoing commitment? Is it going to be a permanent fixture or a regular fixture, perhaps in a authority type of a role, or is, it, or is he going to stay active? It's just going to be real. When I say active, I mean in the ring. It's going to be fascinating to find out. But I love it. I love, I love trying to anticipate what they're doing creatively. Obviously, they're working very hard. The fact that they're paying attention now to little details and planting these little Easter eggs in the story is hell, it's fun.